How did you get into filmmaking? I got into filmmaking because it was just something I always knew I had to do once I picked up the family Super 8 movie camera. As a little kid of age five, six, seven, I don't know, really early, I was already writing books when I could write and I was stapling together and creating characters. Um, I was obsessed with, uh, I would watch uh, the Barnabas Collins Dark Shadows series with my mom, Star Trek, anything movie related and kind of scary, the Six Million Dollar Man with robots, all that stuff. My dad watched that and I was just obsessed with it. I would clip ads out of the newspaper and when I was introduced to the family movie camera and then later across the street from me, Joel Weinkoop, uh, my best friend and uh, filmmaker and a babysitter back in the 70s actually because he's a few years older than me, he was making movies with a Super 8 uh, movie camera like the Bionic Boy and such and I was in some of those and my own creativity just kind of merged with that. Uh, like I would watch, you know, the uh, ABC movie of the week, like The Last Dinosaur, or The People That Time Forgot, or The Land That Time Forgot, and I was obsessed with dinosaurs, and I had my little dinosaur action figures, and sooner or later I was making uh, dinosaur movies with the Super 8 movie camera. So it just kind of evolved uh, when I got, uh, tried to use the first Super 8 movie camera that, the, you know, the family had, then my mom later, um, saved up green stamps and bought me my, a, a chin-on camera and that's what I kind of used for a long time as I emulated some of my favorite films you know starting in like 78, 79, somewhere in there so I've been doing this for probably 40, 42 years now you know just making my own underground movies and then my first feature like uh, Super 8 movie was uh, Day of the Reaper in 1984 what was your first film project? Uh, again, the first feature-length film project was uh, Day of the Reaper in 1984, and it was a culmination of, uh, you know, me making uh, Super 8 movies as a kid. And, I mean, some of the titles were It from Outer Space, um, let's see, The Cart, about a crazy shopping cart gone awry, The Bowling Ball, about a... Uh, killer bowling ball with this superstar uh, sports guy that was kind of rocky like but then at the end of the movie the bowling ball would always go out of control and he would have to battle it and blow it up and that kind of stuff so he had this bowling ball flying through the air knocking people out in the head and uh, causing all kinds of havoc so I made that I mean just all kinds of movies um, just trying to remember and then when I saw Halloween on television on its broadcast premiere on NBC in probably 80 or 81 probably 81 uh, you know, I, I realized I didn't, I didn't have to emulate dinosaurs and Star Wars and science fiction and try to do all that, that I could actually just get a rubber knife from the store and have a POV shot with a pretty girl at the top of the stairs and kind of, you know, do a, a lot more. And I was a lot more at home with that. And it was a lot more satisfying in terms that I could emulate what I was seeing. And that's why I like movies like Last House on the Left and Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer and Pink Flamingos and all those kind of movies. I love those because they kind of inspire you because they come from the same origins that you have access to, which is what you have around you and uh, very little money and a minimalistic Jess Franco approach. Um, so that's, you know, that's kind of how it all started. You know, I was just making movies and uh, my first movie, my first, first movie that I ever made uh, in 1970, probably 78 or 79, was called Super Panther. And it was a four minute uh, movie based on the Pink Panther series, which I love with Peter Sellers and Superman. It was about a klutzy guy who thought he was Superman, but he flew in the telephone poles, fell, could never get the bad guys, and was just a complete screw up. So that was my first, first movie. Then I did one called Conan the Barbarian, because I love the Conan books, Robert E. Howard, a lot of sword fighting. Again, I got to play Conan, a little blonde, skinny kid, you know, in the backyard with wooden swords. So, and then again, all this led to, uh, you know, other interests. And when I saw horror movies, I've always been, a, you know, you can't emulate a Hammer Dracula movie too easily with uh, no money in the garage in the backyard. But Halloween, again, you could emulate that with a rubber knife, a mask, and, you know, one or two actors or actresses. So, that's kind of how, how it all started, and those were my first uh, forays into Super 8. Batteries flashing. How long have you been making films? 
Again, I've probably been making movies since 79, which would be 41 years I've been making crazy underground movies. What have you worked on or are you currently working on? Uh, I've done the Truth or Dare Critical Madness franchise, which includes Wicked Games, Screaming for Sanity, uh, Deadly Dares, I Dared You, Creep, Killing Spree, uh, worked on Kevin Lindemuth's Alien Agenda, Alien Conspiracy series, uh, more recently contributed to um, uh, Gift Wrapped and What's it called? Gift wrapped and gift wrapped and gutted. Gift wrapped and gutted. And Zombarella. Uh, you know, just kind of shorts. High fear. Uh, high eight. Uh, high death. Uh, these are anthology movies where I contribute. Uh, you know, a segment to those, and uh, work with uh, Katrina, Michelle Macabra, and a lot of cool people. You know, in my region that are, are really into this kind of stuff, and so. Those are kind of the, the things that I'm working on now. Again, it's gotten a lot tougher with markets and time and, you know, raising funds even with Indiegogo and everything. So the anthology thing has been really good, you know, recently. Being able to do one or two of those every couple of years and, you know, keep your name out there and, and, you know, get something out there on the markets through places like uh, Wild Eye or SRS Cinema. So collaborating with people like Brad Sykes and, you know, a lot of others is, you know, it's been fun. And uh, it's a lot easier, easier on the budget, but it still takes as, as much time and effort as it always does to do them and do them well. What advice would you give people wanting to get into the film industry? Uh, get into the film industry, uh, that's tough because there's not many people who make a living in the film industry. Um, I would say just get out there and realize your vision on your 4K phone. Realize your vision with whatever you have access to, right around what you have, right around your locations, your friends, actors or actresses you know, or you know, hook up with them on social media, people that are like-minded, and really just get out there and do it. Get your work seen, see how it goes, and, uh, and then there's two routes you can go. You can either keep doing movies and get them distributed or in film festivals and hope that, uh, you know, that takes you places. Usually one thing does lead to another. Or you can go to film school and, uh, you know, spend the money on that and network and end up with a good job in the industry and move your way up. And hopefully someday you will, uh, you know, be able to... Go up the ladder and get to the you know the point that you you know desire, whether it be director or writer or actor or you know or whatever. And acting the same way, just take whatever projects uh, move you and that you're comfortable with, and get a lot of practice, and you know just get out there, get yourself out there, and do it. I think overthinking it a lot of times uh, can hinder you. You just got to get out there and really go for it. Promote yourself, your channel, your websites, your social media. Uh, you can find me on uh, Facebook, Movie Maker Tim Ritter. Same on Instagram and uh, or through my website, www.timritter.com. Most of my stuff is available on Amazon.com and uh, SRS Cinema Store. Just go to Google, type that in, and you know most of my titles. If they're in print, they'll you know they'll be there.